Hello everybody and welcome. Haku's history and pedigree can be traced back to 1990 to Jean-Louis Gasset and his company B. Jean-Louis Gasset is a business exec executive who started his career with Hewlett-Packard, being there responsible for overseeing the release of the first desktop scientific computer and sales in France. After a stunt in Data General, in 1981, he landed at Apple as Director of European Operations. He was key to Steve Jobs' ousting in 1985, taking over his role as Head of Macintosh Development and coming to release several products on stage. He also started the project that led to the Newton message pad. Arguably for bad performance, he was ousted from Apple in 1990 and, in 1991, he started being cooperated. This goal was to develop a new platform from ground up. BOS would be heavily optimized for multiple CPUs and multi-threaded applications and would run on the B-Box, a dual processor's powered PC machine. The B-Box ended up selling only 2,000 units after agreement with Macintosh Cone manufacturers that they would support B. Things were not going great and, in the mid-90s, when Apple went shopping for a replacement for the aging macOS, B positioned itself as an option. However, Apple was not willing to pay what Gasset was looking for. The stalemate was broken when, out of a sudden, Apple bought Next, bringing Steve Jobs the next step back to Apple, for way more than Gasset had asked for. B managed to reach some sort of developer base, having several thousand programs available for the platform, but not nearly enough to be profitable. So, years later, in 2001, B laid most of its employees and ended up purchased for 11 million by Palm. Palm didn't do all that much with BOS, with all assets now belong to the Japanese-based Access. Haiku was born out of this mess. Initially called OpenBOS, development began in 2001 after BOS discontinuation that left users and developers orphan. It is a complete rewrite with both binary and source code compatibility with BOS's latest release, R5. After years of development, in 2008, Haiku became self-hosting and, in 2009, the first official release, R1 Alpha 1, was introduced to the world. Fast forward to 2022, Haiku OS has a brilliant full-time developer and is super stable and usable. So I'll share with you today my experiences using it as my daily driver. Spoiler alert, it's ex excellent and refreshing. After boot, Haiku will greet you with a clean desktop that will bring you back to the old days of Windows 95, but in a good way. If you remember well, Windows 95 brought an object-centric experience to Windows. Before, the program manager was focused on applications, just like the modern smartphones. Haiku will invite you to bring back to your life the user interface metaphors that made computers easy to use. Folders, objects on a desktop, drag and drop concepts. Moreover, objects on the screen are not huge, meaning that it's again possible to multitask. With things being so big as they are today, no matter how large your monitor is, you still can't fit much on the screen. With Haiku, you will easily be able to edit a spreadsheet and use a text editor at the same time, side by side, even on a computer with a small screen. Window management is excellent. It's possible to group windows together by any criteria and move them around together. Visual desktops allow creating separated environments to organize your computer based on the way you work. Replicants are an interesting concept that will allow you to pin useful applications and accessories to your desktop for ease of use. Native Haiku applications are always very minimalistic and only bring you the information that you need to get the work done, hiding the least used features under menus. It works well and helps me reduce my anxiety by not putting too much information under my eyesight. For interface, it gets the most deserved 10 ever. In Haiku, everything is an object. The whole operating system and file system are based on the concept that objects have metadata and metadata is useful. For example, the bolt in contacts agenda is purely based on metadata attributes, with the contacts being nothing more, nothing less than file attributes. The tutorial is very useful in explaining that you can use that to create easy to use databases to track aspects of your life. I very quickly built a book management database. And you don't need to fear losing your data. 
The whole operating system is scriptable, so you can use a bash script and the introduce command line tools to convert and backup your data at will. Some of the included tools are specific to Haiku, but most of them are actually standard GNU tools, making a migration very intuitive for a Unix-like system user. This is one of the most user-friendly operating systems I've ever used. It's incredibly intuitive, easy on the eyes, offering many features that make a computer again a useful tool to get work done and manage your life, instead of being a big web browsing machine like most computers are these days. In a very classic macOS manner, everything's an object, everything can be dragged wherever, and a few clicks are all it takes to uncover the absolute majority of Haiku's functionalities. I'll give it a 10. Haiku is the fastest operating system I've ever used, by far. It makes my test ThinkPad X230 a useful speed dem demo. It boosts fast. Native Haiku applications load instantly. There is no delay anywhere. Leaving the legacy of BOS, Haiku is focused on being lightweight and efficient, making very clear to us how bloated modern software has become. Pervasive multi-threading and multitasking give you a system that responds to inputs almost always instantly, correctly reprioritizing background tasks to give the end user a system that is always ready to respond. Look around for old BOS demos and get ready to be impressed. Battery life is 5 hours doing my usual magic, writing text, browsing the internet, editing a bit of photos and having a big buck bunny looping in the background. It's excellent if you consider the age of the system and its battery. Images speak louder than words. Check it out. For performance, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Hardware-wise, Haiku will detect most commodity hardware. Unfortunately, it only supports GPU hardware acceleration for a small subset of AMD radians. In my X230, I can only use the external display by using the generic GPU driver. My webcams also didn't work with the bolting software, but everything else works fine. There are bugs here and there, but the system is fully reliable for daily tasks. Some basic things are missing though. ThinkPads X and T are the most basic laptops you ever find, and yet you don't get the basic hardware buttons working fine. There's a hibernation or sleep support. I'm not sure if it's a problem with the ThinkPad or if it just hasn't been yet implemented. Other keys for brightness, volume and others just don't work. However, the software controls work fine. You can adjust volume and brightness using the system widgets. It seems that my PostScript printer will be supported only locally and not via network. It scores a 5 out of 10. Haiku offers all the basic software to get you going. KDE style applications are supported, so you get the beauty of GIMP and LibreOffice. You can navigate the world with Marble and get in touch with the world via transmission and telegram. On top of all that, Haiku enthusiasts have created amazing native options. P is a great lightweight text editor with great functionality and awesome for programmers. Mido is an old frills straight to the point video editor. Paladin is a great IDE that links to P and allows you to manage even the most complex of the projects. Wonderbrush is painted on steroids, great for easy sketches and quick drawing, supporting multiple undos, layers and image formats. Email follows the same philosophy as the rest of the system. Each email message is an object in the file system. Unfortunately, the built-in email client does not support HTML. The better option, Beam, will allow you to open emails in a web browser showing the HTML components as an attachment. It's good enough for me, and I just love the clean interface. The included Haiku Depot is an excellent package manager that helps to discover what's available for Haiku with descriptions, ratings, and screenshots. You will need to spend some time there, as Haiku misses some basic functionalities out of the box, such as remote file shares. Should be easy to port OpenGL C++ games for Haiku. However, given the lack of maturity of the OS and the very limited audience, there are not many options. One of the problems is the lack of hardware acceleration for the vast majority of supported platforms, resulting in very choppy performance. The most advanced options in Haiku uh, that I managed to run a Super Tux card and Zero AD. Both suffer from horrible performance on my ThinkPad, but run should run beautifully on my Radeon 560. There are also the mandatory ports of Doom and Quake, Tetris, emulators and puzzles. 
I can't keep you entertained with the latest AAA games, but there is enough for a boring work trip or when taking a break between chapters of your upcoming novel. Most importantly though, those boxes here, you can have endless fun with that alone. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. The included browser, WebPositive, works fine, but has some stability problems. It's based on WebKit and scores 387 points out of the 555 points of the HTML5 browser compatibility test. There are, however, still issues rendering main pages. Nothing fatal, though. It scores 6 out of 10. Security's Haiku's Achilles Hill. Its inspiration was never meant as a multi-user operating system and it shows. There are no login screens, no lock screens, no users, and I'm afraid that all applications run with full admin privileges. You can see that the file system supports some sort of access controls, but I don't see any implementation of them. I'll not use it for anything critical, but only as a home computer, and if you trust all members of your household. There's not even point in evaluating other aspects of the system when the whole model is defeated by someone grabbing your computer away. I'll give it a 0 out of 10. I couldn't find any reliable information on whether Haiku found its home. Haiku native application is so lightweight and minimalistic that I find unlikely they will be leaking any data. For this experiment, I've been using Haiku at least one hour a day for the last two months and I never got any alerts on my firewall. However, any ports from Linux and apps run under Wine may end up leaking telemetric data. I block those on my firewall and you should do the same. This browser generates a unique fingerprint and well, there are alternative browsers, but I found them only after I was done with the review and I haven't evaluated them. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. This is the fastest code uh, boot speed I've ever seen. Honestly, this computer is a decade old and was not a speed demon even as new. I cannot even imagine how fast it boots on new hardware. Really. 10 out of 10. Haiku is what the future of operating system would have been if we had skipped straight from the mid 90s to today. It's simple and elegant, with a task and object-oriented interface that will not bombard you with notifications and distractions. If you want to write some code or a novel or have a separate computer to get some real work done, managing lots of objects related to a single project, it is a fantastic platform. I love the interface, the art style, the fact that everything opens immediately, being the fruit of a bygone era when developers had to be mindful of system resources. It shows you what you need, hiding away or not offering options that are not required by many. It has the consistency of Windows 2000, which is, in my opinion, the apex of the Microsoft Windows experience. Unfortunately, Haiku represents a future that will never be. I'm glad it exists, but I'm sad that it will never take off. In any case, it is for sure a strong contender to become my stay-at-home, study-offline, write-code, manage product assets platform, and it really feels that you are manipulating real things. The interface favors spatial memory and feels incredibly intuitive to use. It's lightweight, respects you, respects your screen real estate and your time, and I love it for that.